And welcome to News Through the Soul Radio. This is Meredith McDonough with The Call Within. And today I have special guest, Helena Woods, astrocartographer. And um, I just wanted to introduce her. So Helena is um, hustled out of New York City for five years before deciding to live a simpler life where she prioritizes her own values and intuition. She began living around the world, and in 2018, she settled in France and began learning about astrocartography. She now uses her gifts by sharing her reflections and insights on relocation astrology and slow, intuitive living. She creates to connect. Life moves fast, and she wanted to slow it down for a little while and allow time to stand still so she could remember what true connection feels like, both with yourself and with life. I love that on your website. I love it. Um, so thank you so much for being here, Helena. And of course, for those who are listening, I absolutely had an astro cartography reading with her. Um, it was something that mystified me because I was like, I want to move here. And I had heard about it, but finding one was, was a search. We just talked about that. So welcome. I'll shut up. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. Thanks for having me on your show. I'm excited to chat and talk and yeah. yeah. Should be good. Oh, yeah. cool. So I guess is, um, yeah, let's talk about that journey out of New York City. I'm really curious. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, so as a kid, I grew up as a performer in the theater, um, grew up singing and dancing. And my dream was always to be on Broadway. And um, as a little kid, um, I I wanted to go to New York and move to New York and make it big. That was kind of always like my big dream growing up. And I moved to New York and um, I went to school for a year, dropped out and worked at an off-Broadway theater, um, got really into the whole Broadway, off-Broadway, off-off-Broadway scene and started, you know, going to classes, dance, acting, ushering at shows. And I would go to auditions and get callbacks and things like that. And I worked really hard and worked really fast. And I was always chasing something outside of me, chasing success, chasing achievement, chasing visibility, um, because it was something that as a kid, I was kind of taught, you know, even on a subconscious level, you know, people always telling you as a kid, like, you should do this. You're so talented at this. You should make this your career. So often people told me that as a kid that I just did it because that's what I was seen as. Yeah. And I never had the idea that just because you're good at something doesn't mean you have to make it your job or your career or your life's work. <laughs> Sometimes you can just be good at something and have it be fun. Yes. And that was something I didn't realize until I grew older and I moved to New York and I experienced it. And live in New York, living in New York, it's the energy is super fast, you know, obviously being in New York, but being in the entertainment industry where you're always auditioning and you're always hustling and you're always, you know, waiter waitressing or babysitting, trying to make ends meet and hoping to get a show. And that kind of lifestyle was so fast and it was so hard and it was so intense. And I realized, you know, my dad suddenly passed. And in that moment when he passed, I kind of realized I can either keep going with this, with this industry and, and trying to chase the next thing and be seen and all of this, or I can just stop and ask myself, what is really fun for me? You know, what is the most fun, joyful way I can connect with creativity? Which at the end of the day, that's all I wanted to do is be creative. And, and, and in some way create things, you know, stories, storytelling. And um, so when he passed, um, you know, a lot of things shifted where I realized I didn't want to be in New York. I wanted to be a photographer. And I bought a camera that day. Like I just knew because I had been doing, you know, photography for fun, like on Instagram or blogging, writing on my blog, all of that. And it was then that I realized I wanted to do follow my heart. And so I started doing photography. The photography led to YouTube and led to making films and just continuing to create content and blog and share my heart. That is kind of what I realized in terms of my values. And death is a really profound thing because when there's a death in your life, it can really shake you up and make you realize what do you value? What is what, what matters to you in life? And what do you need to do in order to feel fulfilled and feel intrinsically happy with your life choices? And so, um, you know, picking up a camera was the first big way that I got out of that after a whole lifetime of, of, chasing performing and doing this and being having this identity around being a performer when I picked up a camera it was like everything shifted and then I left New York City and then I moved to a small town 
And I started learning about slow living and how to get back to my roots and like, who am I and simplifying my life and slowing things down. And then my husband got a job. He's my boyfriend at the time, but my husband got a job in France. And so we moved to France and then living in France these last five years, it's just been so different. The pace of life, the rhythm of life is so much slower here. Um, and like meeting a lot of French people and understanding their values and what's important to them and also like business owners and all of this the entrepreneurial world here in France, it's so different. They're not chasing metrics or shiny pay- pennies or whether or not something is successful or, or seen in a huge way, but rather are they making enough money to be comfortable? And are they happy doing their work? Do they have the time to go on vacation with their family? Yeah. So it's kind of, you know, like that's like the core thing is like, do I have time with my family? Do I have vacation time? Yes. Do I make enough money to pay my, my rent and live comfortably? Yes. Then we're good. We don't need to have more than what we want. And I think that's the thing that I lost track of in early in my journey is being told that um, you have to dream bigger. You have to want more than what you think you want. And so now I'm here in France and I'm doing whatever feels fun, whether that's, you know, doing astrocartography and locational astrology or creating videos that inspire my heart in that moment or, yeah, working with people one-on-one. I'm doing what feels fun and what feels good and flowing with that and allowing the intuition to guide me to the next step and not putting pressure on myself to, you know, have certain metrics or certain outcomes from those things. So yes. that's, that's basically been my life in a, in a whole nutshell. <laughs> yeah, no, I love it. And out of, this is going to have a random well, side tangent, but out of curiosity, when you detached and went back to your values and went back to your guiding inner force, your intuition, did you find that financial prosperity followed as a spiritual entrepreneur? Was that more in flow? The spirituality component definitely grew. Yeah. Um, once I started learning about values, like value setting, I read a book called The Desire Map, which was really huge for me. Um, there's a whole workbook on like discovering your core desired feelings, which is like, what do you want to feel instead of chasing an outcome or a goal? How do you want to feel? Mm-hmm. And in the feelings, you know, I started learning about other things like getting just I went to I went to Bali for a trip by myself during that time when I started learning about living slow and I started doing meditation every day and I started learning about the Akashic records. I started opening the records and now, you know, I have like this intuitive like relationship with the records and like the psychic abilities really turned on when I started to eliminate the distractions and slow down enough to listen to myself. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And I, and I, as someone who, because like we were talking earlier, who used to wake up like a bat out of hell, I was like, oh, um, you yeah. know, similarly, um, you know, I used to, well, I still do sometimes, but when I was a teacher, for example, back when I, back in my old life, when I was a teaching assistant, you know, every morning it was like a rush out the door, yeah, a rush out the door. And it was, it took a lot just to sit for, I used to I'd call it five minutes of stillness. I was like, I don't even want to meditate. I just want to have like no, no noise yeah. for like five minutes. Um, before I step into the void of noise of, of small children and, um, I mean, I love them. They were great. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but it's interesting how it's very easy to get caught on the wheel. And I think especially for young professionals and wow. coming out of college in their twenties and thirties, and even people into their forties. And now we're seeing people, you know, pop, you know, leaving because of the great resignation. They're just like, I can't do this anymore. Oh, I know. Yeah. And so many, I was thinking about this this morning as I was sitting on the couch drinking coffee. And I was like, this is what I was like, really, oh, just really chill. And like, just, you know, make my way over here to the laptop, yeah. get settled. So of being like, oh, 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 that's usually how, yeah. sometimes how it yeah. goes on a busy morning. And, um, you know, I've got like laundry behind me. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to just blur my background. Like, yeah. Here we go. yeah. But, you know, so many, I feel like so many people also too are afraid to, I, I, my guides are kind of showing it to me as like a pool. Mm-hmm. And people very much want to let go of the ledge, you know, the, the grind, but they're afraid to let go of the grind because they're like, but what if I drown? If I yeah. don't grind, I will drown. And I used to have, I still sometimes, I work through this, you know, still now on a um, my mental mindset level is, you know, if I don't, if I don't do something, I'll sink. I got to, I got to sink or swim. It's either yeah. one or the other. Um, yeah. And then finally someone was like, you know, you could just float. You could just float. I was like, what? <laughs> float? Yeah. Do you know who you're talking yeah. to? I'm a, t- a type A overachiever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Covering perfectionist. There's no such thing as that. Yeah. So, <clears throat> but yeah. 
I wanted to pop back to how we met, which was through astrocartography. Um, we can talk a little bit about that. So for those who are listening, I found Helena because I was in a place of wanting to relocate. And that's actually a big question that I get in my intuitive readings is I'll have clients come and they're like, you know, I'm thinking about moving to California or thinking about going over here. I'm thinking about going over there. And energetically, I can sense like, you know, what areas would be optimal and, you know, kind of like, hey, like, you know, these are the pros and cons of this area for you. This is, these, these are what my intuitive perceptions are saying. And so I'll give an example for years, people used to tell me, we just see you living in Hawaii. We just see you living in Hawaii. And I'm like, okay, I'm not Hawaiian number one. Uh, but I was like, yeah, I was, I never, whenever I get there, you know, I'm crawling like after 10 days, I'm like, get me out of here. I mean, Hawaii is beautiful, <laughs> yeah. but unless yeah. you're, unless you surf on the regular, there isn't mm. much to do. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, yeah. so we did our reading together and you were like, yeah, Meredith, it's a great place for you to reset. Um, mm -hmm. but it's not, again, it's not an ideal place for your business or for, it was a very validating. So that's what I love about astrophotography yeah. is it kind of validates the intuition. But anyway. Tell me, Completely. tell us more about astrocartography, how you got into yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. So astrocartography is the um, astrology of place and relocation and seeing how the different energies in the world kind of bring to light the different aspects of consciousness that we have within us. It's kind of this idea that we exist everywhere at once and we have connections with every part of the world. Um, and so when we move to certain parts of the world, we can activate certain things like um, there's relocated charts, which is seeing how different areas of life get activated or turned on. And, um, you know, if you wanted to somehow like do some more promotional work or be seen in a career way, visibility, we'd want to see some planets on the MC, which is the midheaven and where you're most visible. If we want to see, you know, a place where you're more focusing on relationships, we'd want to go to a descendant line where we're, you're going to be more likely to meet really important people in your life. And so when you live in different parts of the world, you're kind of like activating certain parts of you. Um, certain things are coming, being brought to light. And so, um, yeah, it's fascinating, you know, like I, so I grew up, you know, on the moon MC line in California, which is like performer related and Leo Moon is very performer actor related, moved to um, New York, went on a moved to a descendant line, met my husband on a very important relationship line. He is Mercury. He's the embodiment of Mercury, Mercury which I just found to be so cool. And then I moved to France where I'm on my Venus I see and my Mercury I see. And it's all about, you know, home and connection with the land and loving the place and being feeling at home here. Um, but it's also the simple joys and slow living. That's the Venus energy. Venusian energy is very slow and, you know, appreciating beautiful things, having gratitude for the small things in life, nature. Um, it's very Venusian. And so, you know, being on these lines, it's like those things activated within me when I moved here. And so um, anyone can look at their chart and see, you know, what parts of the world are they most visible? Are their relationship themes coming in? Their home lines are coming in. And also this, them, some, their uh, sense of self is being activated. Um so it's really cool and you can use it and, and kind of plan your trips and your travels and also moving. Yes. I love that. When we did my chart, um, cause I remember being so curious cause I was going on, I was going to New Zealand. It was interesting cause I found you at a time where it was like, I'm going to all these really very vastly different places. Uh, but I was going to New Zealand and then going a couple months later to, uh, Egypt and doing sort of some soul searching, spiritual searching there. And I remember you say with Egypt, you're like, it's fun and it's exploration. I was like, yeah, and it really was. It was just, you know, every day I was like, you know, going in and out of tombs and pyramids. I mean, it was cool. It was just like, wow, you know, yeah. and other things are activated there as well um, yeah. on, a, on a soul level. Um, so, and New Zealand, you know, very similar. I was like, oh, yeah, that's, that's right. You know, this is, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. when you said to me as well uh, <clears throat> about Hawaii and this resonates, because I actually was thinking of moving to Hawaii, but I was like, man, I gotta like move there. And then I got to make friends. And then it's a lot of work to move there, you know, because it's, it's an island surrounded by water and it's not exactly cheap, you know, to import everything. And, um, you know, your cat's got, you know, pets got to go through a quarantine period. No, no, it's like, this, oh, it's, yeah. a, it's, it's like a two month thing, isn't it? It's, it's a thing. It is yeah. a very big thing. <laughs> and, um, when my mother moved there, it literally just took over her life. And I was like, well, how am I gonna, you know, manage a, you know, my own work and then, you know, business and this, and then, you know, try to transition. And, um, you know, when you said, no, no, she's like, you're, you said it's a, it's a good place just to rest, but you yeah. Know, <laughs> yeah. And come back. And I was like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the curiosity yeah. that's just popped into my mind was, um, do the vortexes like, you know, Sedona and Holly, 
Do the vortexes have any influence? Does that pop up at all in astrocartography? It doesn't. It doesn't. But I, I, I actually learned about earth vortices before I learned about astrocartography, and that always really resonated with me. Um, so I think that's a separate thing. But I definitely, definitely, yeah. you know, I mean, massive energy in those those spots in the world. Yes. Yes. Um, I've been. Yeah. People always say your life will change. And I'm like, yeah, it changes. <laughs> yeah. Oh changes. my gosh. I know. I've been wanting to do more trips to those spots. Um, yes. So cool. Yeah. Big, big shifts, big shifts. Um, yeah. So let's talk more about like your intuition and intuitive living. Cause I, yeah. I think so many people, I guess we'll call it, you know, it's now, I guess they were terming it the soft girl life. So many people desire it. And I, I know I'm someone as well who like, desires it, but to stay in it, yeah. Without the distractions. It's like, how do you do that? Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Like you're always centered, like your soul, your inner voice, who you are on a deep level is always in communication with your intuition. It's part of you. And the issue is we get so distracted by outside noise of what we should do or what we should want in our lives. Um, that the noise overpowers the inner voice. Yeah. Um, so I grew up as a kid writing to my intuition. I grew up a journaler. So when I was like seven years old, I got my first journal and I would just write on the street on the little corner and I would just write down, you know, observations of what I saw. Or I just journal, you know, and um, as I, you know, I, I have like over 70 journals at this point and from over the years and as a teenager, you know, going through a hard time, I would write to my inner voice. I would, I would call it God, you know, I'd say, dear God, and I would ask questions and I would receive answers back. Um, and it, and I always felt such like protection and peace and faith from something like higher always. And like, even if I was having a hard time or just being the very ambitious overachiever little kid that I was, I always could come back to my journal and receive these, this peaceful wisdom that would write back to me. Like that was always channeled and, and through, um, and so as I got older, I started realizing that those feelings are felt in the body and they're not felt in the mind. And so as I got older, like in college, you know, I would have a crush on a guy and I would ask my friend, don't ask your mind. I don't want to hear what your mind has to say. Ask your gut. What does your gut say? What does your heart say about this? I would like ask questions about like things I was like worried about or like scared about at that point, which is, you know, yeah, dating, yeah. you know, or guys. <laughs> yeah. But I, yeah, Hello. yeah. Yeah. I'd be like, what do you think this meant? <laughs> you know? And so I would ask my friends and at, at there became a point where like my friends were like, stop asking me if what my gut says, you know, I know what you mean, <laughs> but it's like, I kind of got from the journaling into the mind and realizing how the mind is constantly overthinking and analyzing and worried and fearful and always thinking about the worst case scenario and the risks, I realized that that was not the inner voice because the energies were completely different. And so I, I started noticing that the inner voice can communicates with you through the gut or through the heart, one of those two spots, or just in the body. It just feels peaceful in the body. And I just developed that practice over time of, of realizing the two voices. And then I started learning about, you know, Eckhart Tolle and his book, Power of Now. And then as I got into adulthood, I read, you know, Untethered Soul, which is a great book. But all of these books kind of confirm there are two voices, there are two energies within us. And at any point, we can label it and label that mind and say, thank you, but you know, I, I, I'm going to listen to my inner voice right now. You know, at any point we can choose to go within, but it's just a matter of breathing, like breath work and then connecting with the body and then just finding that stillness to listen. And that's the thing that's so hard is the distractions will come in and try to carry you away. But just going back to the breath is really key. Yeah. And, and it's interesting. And I hear everything you're saying and it all resonates because even in the way I was taught and mentored, um, for intuition development, even in my seven step guide for intuitive awareness and people are like, it's not just seven steps. And I'm like, you don't understand. This is just the method. Yes. Happen. It's just to listen to your own, no pun intended, the call within yourself. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, breathing is the part of it. Feeling is a part of it. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I remember <laughs> also doing, I did another mentor who was like, you know, Meredith, you just need to like journal and get your own messages for yourself first and then go give your readings. I was like, oh, whoops. <laughs> okay. Um, but it's interesting because people oftentimes, I think when they think of intuition, this, this one thought that seed that popped in is they kind of want it to like 
drop down from the sky, like just this mm. answer that will just drop in like right in your hand. And sometimes it's, it's not an answer out there. It is an answer Mm-mm. from within and yeah. the journaling, if it can, you know, coaching can do that, but also just, like you said, the journaling, recognizing those two voices, how to discern between, and this yeah. is a big one I hear from clients is how do I know this is my, my head or my fear? How do I know that's my intuition? I'm like, well, intuition is like a muscle. The more yeah. that you go to the gym and you lift it, whether it's giving readings, whether it's journaling, whether it's pulling Oracle cards, connecting with nature, however you want to do it. Yeah. It, it just, it will only though, like, you know, it will only get stronger if you keep using it. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and it, and I'd say too, is like when you turn on this switch, I'm sure you can relate to this. It's like, um, I was telling somebody once, I was like, it's not like a switch I can turn off and on. I, I used to carry that mindset back when I, for five years ago, when I was still in the classroom, because I had to, you know, I don't want to feel my yeah. student stuff all the time. Um, but I realized now it's, it was, it'd be damn near impossible. It'd be like operating without my left hand, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So and it's a big, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> a, and I I've noticed a big difference between like the mind. Cause that's a question that will come up a lot. You know, it's like, how do I differentiate between the two? the inner voice or the intuition feels peaceful. So like sometimes you'll get an idea and if it feels really manic, like oh, I need to do this right now, that can often be the mind and it could seem like the intuition, but when it's coming from like manic pressure of like time scarcity, yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah. the mind. When it comes from a place of, oh yes, this is it. This is it. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. there's, there's like kind of that claircognizance of knowing of like, um, not doubting, like there's just this peace. It just feels like water. It feels like a well. It feels like you're, like a well of wisdom. It just feels, you know, like time is not important at all. And it just, it, yeah, it feels peaceful. That's like the biggest way to differentiate between the two is kind of know what is the energy behind that thought that just came in. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> and I see this commonly, we're talking about dating and breakups, like, I, you know, people, who get fearful of like breaking up, like, Oh my God, I'm going to break up. And they go into the head it's like, but what does your body say? Does it feel better to be on your own? If it feels more peaceful. And again, that, that it's sometimes that, that can be that battle, which again, we're, you know, we're, we shift out of the battle, the more that we, mm-hmm. you know, we uh, plug in and, and tune in. Um, but yeah, the, the, and that's one thing I noticed with my own clients is the distractions, like, you know, the kids come running in or the kids are sick or, you know, yeah. the cat puked on the carpet or there's yeah. something to sort of take, take them, um, pull them away. Uh, mm-hmm. and I'm like, you know, sometimes universe is like, you have to not have to, but it, it, sometimes it's just for, for me, it used to be just five minutes in my car in the morning. Yes. I was like, exactly. those five minutes were so sacred. I was like, I'm going to roll my windows up and just sit here in silence. <laughs> like exactly. <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. Some things I love to do. I love to take a few deep breaths before like I leave the car or leave like the door, the front door is I'll just take a moment to like breathe and then leave. Or, um, you know, even just as simple as like leaving five minutes earlier, just to make sure like you're, you're not rushing and you're just, you can note, you know, the wind, the light as it hits the windshield, you know, you can kind of like slow down and take your time and not feel the pressure to, to get there on time. Cause that's something that I struggle with. It's like, I always need to get right on time. And if I'm even a minute late, I'm like hard on myself or I feel pressure. And so, um, just that, like that ability to like, just like go five minutes earlier. And then, um, yeah. And just like, just the breath, right. Just like connecting with the breath in those small moments. Like I light a candle before I go to sleep at night. I turn off all lights and everything. I just light a candle and I watch the candle flame for a few minutes before I go to sleep. And it just really recenters me and like, reminds me like, yep, it's a slow, we're slowing down, you know? So yeah. Yeah. Yes. And I, and I'm sure you can relate to this. I mean, I grew up in the DC Metro area and it is, um, it is kind of just running, you know, yeah. everyone's kind of running around and I'm not saying that the, the people are rats. I mean, they're wonderful people, but yeah, I just, you know, as an empath and intuitive, it was just like, I, I mean, I burned out not once, but twice. Cause I was just, mm-hmm. I, you know, to sustain, do the work, but also be a sensitive person and run yeah. a spiritual business and, mm-hmm. you know, work a full-time job. It was just going, 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 going. And, yeah. um, you know, when COVID came as, as I know, as challenging and, and as hard COVID was physically mentally, you know, for many people, for myself, at least I was very privileged in that way. I will not deny that I was very privileged to be able to, it was for me, it was a godsend. I remember yeah. thinking to myself, like I was at school, I was, you know, at my, um, old job at Montessori and 
doing my thing. Mm. And they were, you know, pure COVID on the TV. And my guides were like, you're going to be okay. You're not going to get sick. Like your students are going to be okay. Don't worry about that. And I was like, you know, I would really love if you could just, if you guys could just like, if I could just stay at home and work and be paid to stay at home and just, I can also work on my business. And then two weeks later, it was like, Hey, we're closing school for two weeks. And now we're closed for the rest of the year. And yeah. mind you, it's kind of like, Whoa, what's going on? But, uh, yeah. it really kind of, it, it was it said, Meredith, this is exactly what you wanted. You wanted to stay yeah. home and be to stay yeah. home to work on your work, work and work on your business. I was like, yeah, that's kind of weird. I kind of did. Um, <clears throat> so, but, uh, yeah. yeah I th- and I love the candle flame for sure. Cause I think so oftentimes we, at least I notice in the wellness community, when we talk about connecting with intuition, it's oftentimes with, you know, com- more complex tools or mm-hmm. it has to be in a more, um, I think people overcomplicate it. And yeah. the thing as simple as just connecting with a candle, yeah, walking outside, taking a few deep breaths, is it's like stupid simple, like keeping it stupid yeah. simple is what I know. it's supposed to be. Um, yeah. And I, and I think slow living is also like needing to cut out the stuff that's distracting you and unessential. And that means saying no to more things, like more boundaries. That's a big part of slow living, I think, because when we have more on our plate, we're more scattered, we're more distracted, we feel more stressed when it's like we've got like, you know, a few options or a few things that we're focusing on, th- the less, the better, because it's like our, we can give it our full attention. We can really be present with the project, allow that space for creativity and spontaneity and new ideas to kind of flow through. But yeah. when we don't have that empty space in the mind, it's like crammed, you know, there's no, there's no, none of that magic of like ideas floating in or, yeah. I mean, I always like to think of, I always call um, you know, um, you know, the book, Harry Potter, right. Yeah. Um, it was channeled through to, um, you know, JK Rowling, um, when she was doing nothing, she was on a late train looking out the window. She had like a three or four hour train delay. And all of a sudden she was looking at her window board. She didn't bring any Game Boy or, you know, any, the switch or like, she didn't have a phone at that point. I have a Game Boy. I love playing the Game Boy. So that's why I'm bringing up Game Boy in 2023. (laughs) But, um, you know, she didn't have a smartphone. She didn't have any of these things distracting her. It was literally like, she was bored and the idea came into her mind. And it's like, that's the magic of life is like when we have that space within our minds, when we like don't have as many distractions and things vying for our attention, that like those opportunities for creative magic and blessings can kind of flow through to us. Yes. And it could be as simple as like what you want to eat for lunch that day or like what you want to do when you get home or as big as like an idea for a book. It doesn't have to be as big of an idea, but you know, that space is so needed. And because we live in a time right now where we're constantly listening to things or consuming content or just trying to do more all the time, especially with, you know, in TikTok, TikTok has just made it like mania. Like so many, I think people are just like, they have like a sense of manic, you know, in their minds because of TikTok. And it's like, when we have those boundaries of cutting out the things that aren't helping us and are actually distracting us, it's like, that's when we can really get that, like that peaceful feeling and slow down. Yes. Yes. And I, and I sense it in, I see it too, as people, again, kind of, kind of, I mean, California going from, to connect with what you're saying is going from the East coast to the West coast. Yeah. Um, I lived in California now for two years and, uh, it was an adjustment. Mm-hmm. My sister was like, it's going to take you, uh, like a year to fully like integrate. Yeah. And yeah. I, I would show up everywhere like 15 minutes early. And she's like, you don't have to show up everywhere 15 minutes. Yeah. Early. You don't have to minutes early. Everyone's going to look at you like you're crazy. And I would I would try to be late. And I was like, try to walk slowly to my car. But for the first year, it was like, I was like in deprogramming mode, yeah. um, you know, and uh, <laughs> talked to one of my friends. And he was like, you just seem a lot less stressed living in mm-hmm. California. I was like, stress. It's just not the same as it was, you know, being in the DC Metro area and, um, that chasing feeling. Mm-hmm. And I see it with, you know, and I, oftentimes I feel like it's really intense. Again, I think I feel for people our age, am I doing enough? Yeah. You know, am I, am mm-hmm. I certified enough? I used to get here. Am I intuitive enough? Am I mm-hmm. qualified enough? And, um, I've been doing, um, part of a mind, a uh, mindset cohort, like a mastermind. And one of the women inside the group, the leader of the group was like, you know, if it's your business, you're allowed to write the rules and the rules oh, yeah. can be whatever you want them to be. And I was like, really? She's like, yeah, you're allowed to break the rules. I was like, 
Amazing. Okay. Is it safe? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I know. Okay. I know. But isn't that so freeing though? Yeah. And, and it's, it's like, like, yeah, when you take your power back, yes. oh my gosh, it's so freeing. Like it's a life of freedom. It really is. And and you get to design your lifestyle, your business, what you what you you know what you want to do, how you want to work. Like it's like you can design it all. Yes, and I I noticed this too with like you know we're an age of Aquarius, but in terms of like the housing, you know mm-hmm. our generations like yeah like you know ha- you know having a house would be nice. But I see more and more of my generation being like, well, what about van life? Yeah, you know, what about living off the grid? What about yeah. not tying our ball and chaining into that? You know, yep. two to three thousand dollar a month mortgage. You know, that's know. what people are hustling for. And um, you know, just my parents are boomers, so they're like, "But don't you want a house?" You know? Yeah. I'm like, I don't know. Like, maybe I'll just like raise my kids in a chicken farm. I don't like, yeah. <laughs> figure yeah. that part out yet. Like, my yeah. people do it. People do it. Um, yeah. it's figure outable. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. And I love that yeah. you kind of like broken from the mold. It's like breaking free. Yeah. Oh, I know when, you know, we moved to France in 2018 and we thought we would just be there two years. And then we ended up just getting another contract and staying. And we move every year or two, we move to a new place. And it's like, every time we move, we have to get rid of some stuff and we have to like, everything has to fit in our car. And, um, you know, my husband and I, we have, we have no interest in having a mortgage or like being that tied down feeling of like the pressure to like, to be stuck with something for 20 years. Like that yes. idea is just not appealing to us at all, even though it's, it's a financial investment, it's a good financial investment, yes. but it's just like, and that goes back to your values. Like, what do you value? Like yes. what is important to you? Because what society values might not be the value that you have. And for me, like freedom is number one, like being free to just pick up and go anytime, any place, any, and you know, that's my, my business is around that. My lifestyle is around that. Everything, everything I choose is around that. And so like, yeah, just like what society will say is like, get a job, get a degree, you know, get a, you know, all these things to have security. And it's like, for some, some people like just don't, aren't, they don't need that, you know, to feel yes. good. Um, yes. and, and so that goes back to the values, right? Yes. And I think that's what go and we're talking about that is the values piece is values change. I think it's a big thing that people, yeah. like, I think number one is most of us, we I think I'll say this when we're 18, we become adult, we become adults and at least in the United States and in some places earlier. And, and then 21, you can finally drink, you know, you can, uh, drink, but you can, you know, whatever. But so where I'm getting at with this is I feel like we have values, but it's, I think adulthood now keeps ex- the learning process. I feel like, yeah, we're we, we, we like financially become independent as adults, but the values, I call it kind of like a values shakeout of like, what yeah. is the kind of like, brush is like shaking out your deep, your programming from the way that you grew up, what your parents wanted or whoever raised you. Um, so my parents were very similar. Like you work, you know, for them, it was like work the same job, 25, 30 years, the federal government, then you retire and then you can go do all the shit that you want to do. (laughs) Yeah. I remember when I was looking for, um, when I graduated at college and looking for a job and my mom, I'd be like, you're just lazy. You don't want to work. Cause I was just working in like, in like seasonal gig work. And I was talking about this with a girlfriend of mine. And I was like, look, I was like, cause her and her brother are 10 years apart. I was like, look, like our generation's just different. I was like, you guys yeah. are kind of on the tail, you know, closer to the boomers. I was like, you know, loyalty, loyalty, I think be rewarded, but I feel like if it's inhibiting your growth as a person, whether internally or externally, it's no longer beneficial. What is it really serving you for? Yeah. And there's just over glorification of longevity. Um, so I feel like with, again, age of Aquarius, it's like, you know, we're all about, you know, it's Uranus rule, abrupt changes. It's like, well, sometimes longevity isn't always best. Longer doesn't always mean better. Um, you know, so yeah, I always go, my, this is my random tangent on that. But. Oh yeah. <laughs> anyway, oh, I love yeah. it. I love it. I know. And Pluto just entered Aquarius. I mean, this is, you know, a phase of life we're going to be in for the next 30 years, especially when we go into Uranus entering Gemini, um, that's going to be massive for the United States and for the world. And I think just, there's, yeah, a lot of changes and like, you know, Aquarius is about the humanity, humanity, humanitarian rights, um, technology, helping others. Like, how can we have a more global mindset and a global perspective? That's all what Aquarius is. Um, and so now that we're in that, you know, this is kind of that time of like, that's where the generation is and with the, with the, the mass, you know, what we're all kind of going toward. 
Um, but yeah, really interesting, really interesting. Yes. And I, and I think the, the old energy of people coming in to, to connect with that is I think the old energy was like everyone old paradigm energy was like, everyone is like individuated for themselves. And not to say that in America, we're still not individualistic. We all still have our own unique energetic signature and our own brand, our own flavor, but there has been a uptick in collaboration and community where people are like, well, if I'm rising, you're coming with me. It's not this, well, I'm the crab coming out of the barrel and like, I'm going to kick you down like Lion King. You're going to fall to your death. <laughs> like, yeah. We don't need to do that anymore. It's okay. We yeah. can help each other up. And I, yeah, the exactly. rise, you know, this, and it's almost like when people are trying to maintain that low vibrational me, 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 you know, identity, yeah. it's like, it's not, it's not, not going to hold anymore. Um, yeah. It really is all about expansion. You know, it's uh, expansion and sharing um, and sharing like, I look at it as my guides are kind of showing it to me as um, like someone once was like, well, this is news for the soul platform. Like, shouldn't this be your show? And like, why do you have guests on? And I'm like, because part of my role, my soul purpose here is to like hold the door open for other healers to be, to to, like not walk through them, but open the door of opportunity to share the voice. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, To to cultivate that. So um, yeah. So and yeah, and that Pluto, Pluto and Leo, you know, as boomers was the boomer generation. So Pluto signifies a generation like, you know, Gen Z is um, Pluto and Sag. Pluto and Scorpio generation is the millennials, you know. So we we can kind of see like the generation and, you know, Leo is about the self, about I, about me. Um, you know, the opposite of it is Aquarius, which is about we and like rising, everyone rising together. Um, so yeah, yeah. So very cool. I wonder what is your North Node in? I'm a North Node in Pisces, uh, South Node. Oh, Node. oh yes. cool. Yes. Oh, awesome. Yeah. yeah. Pisces yeah. is all about the transcendence and the interconnection and all of that. So beautiful. Very selfless. Yes. My my Venus is also in Pisces. So that's, oh, um, that's been lovely. <laughs> oh, Venus works so well in Pisces. One of the best placements for a Venus. Well, that's, that's what I, that's what I keep telling myself. It's, I, yeah. have, I think my Mars is in Sag. So uh, mm. there's a little bit of push pull <laughs> Yeah. The visionary though, taking action from a place of vision. Yeah. Yes. yes. And, cool. and, you know, I remember when I first started, you know, in this work, it was, I didn't really have like, when I first like became intuitive, it was never like, Oh, I'm going to be intuitive reader. I'm a tons of money. It was like, okay, yeah. I think this is something I'm supposed to do. And I'm, yeah. you know, again, you know, Virgo South nodes, like, okay, do you have a plan? Do you yeah. have a <laughs> structure? Do you have do you have an Excel spreadsheet? No. Yeah. Do you have a fancy website? No. Um, yeah. and, you know, again, yeah. surrendering into, yeah, a lot, lot of growth surrendering into that. Yeah. Sometimes it's voluntary surrender, sometimes, uh, dragged into surrender, uh, against my will. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, so it's, um, and I think this is where I think people, you know, I think the astrology is more on the rise. I think people want to have a better understanding because I oftentimes I'm meeting with the younger generation who are, you know, what's, but who's after all with millennials mostly is, um, you know, I had someone here doing work at my house and, you know, they were talking about how they got a college degree and they're having struggle finding a job. And I said, look, remember being just where you were and yeah. really- Like, am I going to be living at home forever? Am I going to be doing gig work forever? You know, am I going to make $7 and 50 cents an hour forever as a bridal retail sales associate? Like, is this the rest of life? You know, it was very much like a vacuum. And I was like, no, I was like, you're not. I was like, like, you're not. I was like, but the world is going to shift and change in a way. And I was like, you're part of that change. Mm -hmm. And they were like, really? And I was like, you're part of the change. It's going to be scary because it's going to be counter to every single way that you've been programmed, but you'll be part of it. And yeah. there was like, you know, like a glimmer of hope, like a little booster, like, okay. <laughs> yeah. So, and that's, yeah. that's part of our needle promise, you know, like it's our path is so much bigger than we can see. It's not always just about us, but it's like, like our, our generation as a collective, like us working together at this point in history for the next generation. Like there's so much we can't see. Um, and yeah, that's the magic of like, you know, living with your intuition and astrocartography and astrology is like you know, when you listen to yourself and you're honoring, you know, what excites you or what lifts you up or what makes you excited to create and work that day and show up for others that day. Um, it's when you listen to that inner voice, it's like, it's part, it shows the natal promise. It shows the chart. Like the chart is a reflection. The transits are a reflection. The places you go to that you feel called to go to, they're a reflection of your natal promise and what your inner voice is guiding you to do. Yeah. I just got chills. I love that. Oh, (laughs) Love it. Just, I'm like, oh, I got goosebumps. I'm like, yeah, this feels good. 
Uh, um, yeah. Yes. Yes. And anyways, and also, yeah, go. Oh, yeah. And, and yeah, and it's like in your work, you know, Pisces North Node and the work you're doing, it's like something I often think about is like by by showing up and doing what you love, you know, you're uplifting the world. Like by you expressing your heart or making something or connecting with people, it's like you're like up leveling the collective you're increasing like this energy and it's it's so infectious and it's so contagious and it's like can you imagine if everyone did that if everyone found the thing that they loved and they just did it and they they felt you know they you know made goals yeah make I love goal setting but like making goals that are like from the heart and like are stemming from like this place of like pure love and passion like if everyone did that and we listen to our values and we listen to our inner voice can you imagine what this world would look like like it's kind of like that wow like it would be yeah. magical you know and yeah. so and it all starts by just like slowing down and listening to your, listening to yourself and getting clear on like who you are and what do you want and what are your values you know but it's 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 magical like yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Thank you, Helena. So we're coming up on our last five minutes of our interview. Loved everything you had to say. Um, and thank you. Yes. It definitely is, uh, you know, part of my God's part of the work is you just being you. I was like, okay, thanks. You know, <laughs> but my work is about service. Um, so yeah. I would love for you to, to shamelessly plug any programs, classes, services, anything you want to share about, um, your business. Um, oh, yeah. how clients can find you and yeah. Yeah. So I make, I make YouTube videos for fun. It's like my creative heart led project. So if you want to watch my videos, um, I make some meditations. I make some more slow living, beautiful videos to kind of help calm people, but also sharing my life to inspire others. And then I just came out with a book called Slow Living. Um, and it's really gorgeously printed with all my photographs from around the world and my travels as I lived abroad. And oh, cool. It's a yeah. beautiful coffee table book and it's all about slow living and how to practically live slow and like different tangible ways to connect with yourself, find your values, live your values, embody them and uh, simplify your life so that you can eliminate distractions and like live a heart centered life um, and romanticize your life and find the simple blessings and the joys in life. Like it's all practical, like advice that I've kind of compiled from my five-year journey of living slow. And I just put it in this book and um, yeah. And then if anyone wanted to book a reading with me, I do astro cartography readings on my website at helenawoods.com. Awesome. Yeah. Anybody who's looking to relocate, move, is this, you know, beyond, is, uh, do they have good schools? I'm like, there's more important questions if they have good schools. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know your lines. Um, yeah. <laughs> there's things yeah. you can harness in this and your relocation. Um, and yeah. I love the practicality. My Virgo South notes, like I'm all about practical. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I um, know. <laughs> and like when, when people book readings with me, they're like, you know, I, I want to make sure I'm getting like some tangible, you know, places that like to go to. And I'm like, oh, don't worry. I'm going to give you like three to four options. You choose where you want to go, but I'm going to tell you the pros and cons of each. And then you make your decision, you know? Yeah. You but, gave um, me a ton. I was like, wow. yeah. It's yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I'm also, I'm in the middle of creating an astro cartography course, locational astrology. We're teaching people how to read relocated charts and maps, and that'll be um, coming out May 20th will be the first day of class. So if anyone wanted to um, take the class, um, you can find that at helenawoods.com as well. <laughs> awesome. Oh, and um, where do we find your slow living book? Oh yeah. It's on Amazon. Oh, awesome. Okay, cool. It's on Amazon, but you can also find it at helenawoods.com slash book. And I have all the links there. Okay. Amazing. Amazing. Well, thank yeah. you, Helena. Any, um, before we close any last, uh, thoughts that you want to share or your words of advice to any listeners, any wisdom go for it. <laughs> yeah. Your life can completely change dramatically in a year, in six months and three months. And it can completely change for the better, like living your dream lifestyle, your dream life, slowing down, feeling peace. All of that can happen very quickly um, when you live in alignment with those little nuggets of wisdom that your inner voice is telling you to do. And it just takes that leap of faith and that trust and the uncertainty and the unknown of like just going for it and just following your heart. And it's scary to do in the moment, but just breathe, <laughs> breathe exhale and just begin but it's a man it's a magical you know it's magical how um the universe is always supporting you the universe wants you to live 
your most authentic self. Like it wants you to live true to your natal promise and your and who you are on a deep level. Um, and it's just a matter of of listening to those those little nuggets of wisdom. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. And I love all the connections we've made <laughs> inside of this interview. Um, and yeah, and we, people can find you at Helena Woods. Dot com. Cool. Mm-hmm. Awesome. And then my YouTube one. is Helena Woods. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you, Helena. It was wonderful to have you here on News for the Soul Radio and here at the Call Within. Um, it was a pleasure. And um, I feel like just the like I feel like the energy from like I'm like, yeah, the energy you bring. I was feeling it this morning. I was like, yeah, I'm just gonna like sip my coffee really slow. And I was like, I don't know what we're gonna talk about today, but it's just flesh itself. Yeah. Now. Um, alignment, but, alignment before action, getting into a feel good place before taking that action. Yeah. Amen. I do that every day. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, it was wonderful to have you and thank you so much for being here. Of course. Thank you.